there guys, Loveless here. Today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. Today I'm going to be attempting to do a beginner's guide to killing floor 2. Now just a warning, this video is not going to contain any new or mind-blowing information. A lot of the information that I'm going over is probably going to be beneath you or things that you've heard before in other videos. But that's okay, because the more you hear something, the more it gets ingrained in your brain and the more likely you are to remember it. So let's start off with game length. The game length settings have three settings. There's short, which consists of four waves, medium, or normal, which consists of seven waves, and long, which consists of ten waves. All of these difficulties, all of these game lengths, end in a boss fight. There are three bosses, only two of which I've seen. There is Hans Volter, or Hans Volter. There is the Patriarch, and the Matriarch, who I have yet to see, though I am told that she does exist. Hans Volter uses poison and corrosive sort of slowing attacks, and he will grab you to absorb health, while the Patriarch, much like the Patriarch from Killing Floor 1, likes to go invisible and heal himself when he's not shooting you with his chain gun or rocket launcher. So there are obviously different strategies to take when fighting these two various bosses. Or the third one, I'm sure, but I have yet to see the third one. The game also consists of four difficulty modes. There's normal, hard, suicidal, and hell on earth mode. The latter difficulties can add new attacks or increase movement speed to the zeds that you fight. Another thing to keep in mind are your perks or your classes. In this game, classes are called perks, and there is a large list of them, which I will only name a few, consisting of things such as the commando, the support, which is what I'm currently playing in the footage you're seeing. There is the field medic, there is the berserker, there is the SWAT, and there are a few more. There are supposed to be a total of ten, and at the time of this recording, I believe there are eight implemented into the game currently. Every time you spawn in Killing Floor 2, you will spawn with a 9mm pistol, a melee weapon, a welder, a medical syringe, and a perk specific weapon. As you can see in this video, because I'm playing a support, which is my personal favorite class, I spawned with a shotgun. Unlike Killing Floor 1, starting waves can actually be quite hectic because there are now multiple forms of clot, which are the basic enemies, or gorefasts, which were the second tier of enemy. I cannot remember what they are called, but they very they behave very much like a a clot, but they're much faster, and they they tend to be more aggressive. So it's a nice change. It makes the starting waves a little more fresh. In this game, whenever you kill a Zed, um, you earn money, which is also known as Dosh in game, and XP. You can use this money to go to the trader to purchase new weapons and things of that sort and the XP of course goes towards leveling up your perk and when your perk gets to certain levels 5, 10, 15, 20, and 25 respectively you get a sort of in perk perk or a sort of ability based on your perk. I'll go over that further in a moment. Now as I stated in between rounds there is a trader um, the trader is only limited for an open time, for a, uh, a certain amount of time, I should say. And the trader seems to be a French AI that only exists in your own mind. There's no physical trader like there was in Killing Floor 1, but as you can see, the line has appeared on the ground to the pod. Um, I'm choosing not to follow it currently, but it's there if I chose to follow it. And that's where I would go if I wanted to purchase new weapons, ammo, armor vests, sell old weapons, or anything in between. Guns in this game, when you're looking at the trader menu, can be quite overwhelming. There are everything ranging from the HX grenade pistols for the demolitions class to the AA-12 shotgun for the support class. One thing that's very important is to stick to your perk specific weapons whenever possible. An example would be the support using shotguns, such as the SG-500, which is the gun that I currently have as my primary shotgun weapon, and the marksman will use the Winchester rifle, which is their default weapon. The reason you want to do this is your perk, or your class, gets bonuses to using perk-specific weapons, whether it be reload speed, increased damage, 
increased aim, speed, or anything of the sort. Using perk-specific weapons definitely pays off. Though, don't be afraid to mix and match within reason. One thing I personally like to do is as the support, since my range is very lacking, I do towards the later rounds like to grab a Winchester rifle, purely for the range. Now one thing that will come up is this thing called Z time, as you can see right now. Everything gets really slow, and that happens, I believe, by a percentage chance whenever you or a teammate gets a kill. You want to use this time to assess your surroundings, look for an escape route, or land headshots on normally agile Zeds. The perk's final abilities are Zed time abilities. An example of this would be the Berserker gets an ability called Berserker Rage, where they can move and attack in real time while everyone else is in slow motion. These are things that you very much want to take into consideration when you get towards the level 25 perk, as it may not seem very pertinent on the earlier and lower difficulties, but as you get to Suicidal and Hell on Earth, it will definitely make a difference. A few other things to keep in mind. Be a team player. When you're in the lobby waiting to load up with a group of friends, you want to look at other people's perks and make sure that you pick a perk that complements the team composition. Much like a game of Overwatch or Dota 2, you want to make sure that your, your selection of character is not hindering the team. You don't need a team of six Berserkers, as nice as it sounds. They may not do so well against a lot of the trash mobs because the Berserker is built for larger mobs. That's another thing that you want to, want to learn, and it's something I don't currently have a list of, is you want to learn what classes do best against certain types or classifications of Zeds. As an example, the Commando or the SWAT are really effective at taking care of trash mobs, while the Support and the Demolitionist are very well suited for taking off bigger mobs like your Scrakes and your Flesh Pounds, which are things that you will learn through gameplay as the characters often shout out the names of these when they come into contact with them. Although if you need a quick example, there is a Scrake, which, unless you're playing on a holiday specific skin patch, which occasionally happens around the holidays, the Scrake will be a large man in an apron who carries around a chainsaw. The Flesh Pound is very similar to the Scrake in size and stature, but they have two glowing kind of spiked gauntlets on their hands and they are very aggressive when shot at or even when looked at for too long. There is also a thing called a Gorefast which looks very much like a clot but they have a sword for a hand and they are bright red. There is a thing called a Husk which is a large Zed, not as large as a flesh, flesh pound but he's getting up there, who has a large uh, rocket launcher on his arm and can have a flamethrower on his arm when in close quarters, but this only happens on higher difficulties. Another thing you want to keep in mind, considering these special special Zeds, is if you encounter a Scrake or a Flesh Pound, don't shoot them until you are ready. This is a lot less useful information when it comes to the Flesh Pounds, as they get agitated simply by being near them, or by maintaining eye contact with them for too long of a time. Even if ignored, they are often known to some. They are often known to come after the players, anyways, just out of pure rage. While the Scrake is very slow, and will not charge unless unless um, approached. The Scrake, when angered, does do a large spin move with a chainsaw that can be very detrimental to a lot of your teammates. There is also a Siren, who screams very high pitched and drains your health very fast. There is a bloater, which is very much like a bloater from Left 4 Dead 2, if you're familiar with that game. He spits bile, and if he's shot in the body and explodes, he launches bile all over the surrounding area, which is definitely not good. It drains your health very fast and makes your screen very much covered in vomit, and it's hard to see. Another thing to keep in mind is heal your teammates. That's one thing a lot of people don't like to do, is heal their own teammates. If you're playing a team-based game, there's no reason to not heal your teammates. One thing that Killing Floor has done to try to really push this idea is healing a teammate is much more potent than healing yourself. 
so don't fear don't be afraid to heal yourself when there's nobody else around or no one's able to heal you but if you press the Z key by default there is a re a radio menu that will pop up on your screen for some quick some little quick responses such as asking for health asking for money or simply saying agreeing or negative or uh, disagreeing or negative would be the better way to put that another thing is if you're going to ask for money or request dosh as it says in the radio menu give it a mount people are much more likely to give you money if they know how much you need say oh man I need a hundred dollars or oh man I only need twenty seven dollars people will be much more willing to give up their hard-earned dosh if you give them an amount so they know how much they're giving if you simply request dosh they will ask you how much it's worth or how much you need and you'll come off like a bit of a greedy person another thing is don't weld doors that aren't needed unlike in killing floor one even when a weld is at 100 uh, percent durability doors can break so make sure that if you're going to weld a door you save it for waves where it really matters or make sure that your entire gree your entire um, your entire squad has agreed upon the place you are going to weld up and defend before you start welding doors. You don't want to break a door when you don't when you still might need it in the future. Finally, my last tip would be to use your head. Try to be courteous and play like you mean it. A lot of times people come into games such as these and don't take it seriously, but a lot of the community obviously plays to win. These games are wave based and do of course have an end and a lot of players would like to reach that end and see the victory thing come across the screen. If you're planning on playing silly, at least discuss this with your teammates before doing so. They'll be glad you did. Anyways, that's all I have for now. Hopefully you guys have learned something, and if you haven't, maybe I've ingrained it into your brain slightly more. Have a great day, and I will see you 